Good morning, everybody. I wanted to show you a way to set up a reverse lag in Maya. Um, for example, when you're rigging a beast or a dog, I'm going to show you three different ways of doing it. Method one or two are fairly straightforward. Method three is a bit more complicated. All right, so the first way we're going to set up this leg is we're going to approach it basically like you would a human leg. And I know this sounds weird for a reverse leg setup, but it will actually work. Let me show you how. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an IK handle. Uh, that's a rotate plane. Uh, we'll go from the hips to the ankle here. And let's call this uh, ankle IK handle. Uh, we're going to make a second IK handle, which will be single chain, which goes from the ankle to what essentially on a human would be the ball of the foot. So let's call this ball K handle. And then we're going to make one last one, uh, also single chain from the ankle to the end of the toes, uh, from the ball to the end of the toes. And let's call this to a gay handle. Now the way the way that you can make this work is basically by grouping these IK handles together and moving the offset of the groups and that will allow you to put the leg in basically any pose you want. So let's start with the uh, ankle IK handle here. Let's group it, call it ankle IK group and its position is going to be right here. And we're basically going to do the same thing for the other two uh, IK handles as well. So let's group the ball IK handle together, together called ball K group. And this will also sit at this location. And then for the toes, group together, to IK group. And this will also sit at this location. Now we can take the three groups we have, group them together, and we can call this toe row group and this will sit at the end of the toes here and then we can take our toe row, row group group that together and just call this foot group and our foot group uh, will sit right here at the ball of the foot so we have this hierarchy now um, we can take our foot group move it around like this um, when we lower the hips uh, and you want to control the angle of this joint right here, you can take your ankle IK group and just rotate it to get a more natural pose. And you also just have the toe group where you can just wiggle the toes. So that all works. Undo this. Um, the thing here for a pole vector is you have one rotate plane solver, which is this thing. Uh, so you can place a pole vector here for the knee. I have a little script to quickly place it. I will link this script um, in the description of the video. So let's just select our three joints. There we have a locator. And we can make this locator the uh, pole vector constraint for our IK handle. And then we control the knee while we can still do all of this and use the ankle group to make a more natural pose. All right, so this is the first method of doing it. It's not the most perfect one. It's a little bit more overhead for the, for the animator, but it does work. All right, so this second method I'm gonna show you will give you the same functionality you would get as you would get with the first method. Um, but in this method, every control is based on translation instead of rotation like we did with the first method. So the way to do this is we'll make a rotate plane solver going from the hips to the ankle here. And let's call this upper K handle. Uh, we will make another rotate plane solver from the knees to the base of the toes here. Let's call this lower IK handle. And then we're going to do one more thing for the toes, uh, which is our simple single chain solver from the base of the toes to the end of the toes. And let's call this toe IK handle. Now, again, we're going to group these IK handles together. And by moving the groups around, that's what's going to give us the control of the leg. So let's start with the toes here. Group it together. <coughs> call it toe IK group. And we will place the pivot of this group right here at the end of the toes. Let's group the upper 
IK handle, call this upper IK group, and we will place this at the end of, um, of our IK setup here, where the IK handle is. And then let's do the same thing for our lower IK handle, group that together, call this lower IK group, and let's place this where our um, lower IK handle is. Now, we can take all of this, group that together, call it the foot group, and we can place this group right here at the bottom of the foot. Now, the way that this works is we can take our foot group and we can move it around to get full leg control. Um, if we want to adjust the angle of this joint, instead of rotating a group, we will take the upper IK group and we will move it back and forward. Basically gives us the same control and we can get a more natural pose. And to wiggle the toes, instead of rotating it, we can just translate this and that will wiggle the toes. Um, so let's reset all of these groups. All right, so uh, to control the angle of the knee, um, we can just make a pole vector constraint to our upper IK handle here. Let's do that. Uh, this is the same script that I will link in the description of the video. So these three joints, this will make a locator. And we'll say U locator are the controller for the pole vector of the upper group. And we can do the same thing for our lower group here since we do have another rotate plane solver. So let's select these joints, put a locator here, and make this locator the pole vector controller for our lower group. So what you have right now is you can um, adjust the upper or the knee like this. If you can, you can also adjust the lower part here of the ankle like this. Now this is actually breaking the bones, um, but can get you some nice controls. And I just want to show you that in the first method, uh, you can also actually do this. Um, if we take our ankle IK group here, um, if you rotate it on the Y axis, you basically get the same result where you can break the ankle um, if you want to use it. Right. So uh, this is the second way of doing it. Um, the functionality is basically exactly the same way as the first method, just as using translation instead of rotation. Okay, method number three is a bit more complicated to set up, but it will actually give you much nicer results. And we're going to use Maya's uh, IK Spring Solver for this. Now, if you do not have the IK Spring Solver in your list here, uh, go to any mail prompt and just type in IK Spring Solver, hit enter, that will load it up for you and it will appear in your list here. If we look at how the spring solver works out of the box, um, we will see that it will give us some functionality, but not exactly what we need. So if we make one of these bad boys um, going from the hip to the base of the foot, we can IK handle um, and we can move this around. Now, the way that you would control the angle of this joint is by going to the attribute editor of our IK handle. And then under the IK solver, uh, IK spring solver attributes, you have spring angle bias. In here, you have this curve. And by positioning the control points of the curve, you can see that you can rotate the angle of the joint there. Um, this will give you some control, but in my opinion, not enough control. So what I've seen people do is they will set up a set driven key system that adjusts the position of these points. And then by moving a controller back and forward or rotating the controller, you're basically blending between this shape and this shape. This kind of works, but like I said, it doesn't give you the actual control that you need. So we're going to look at a different method, method of doing this. To achieve the control that we want, we're going to have to make two IK handles. One's going to be the spring solver, and one is just going to be your standard rotate plane IK solver. Now, in order to make this all work, we're going to have to duplicate some joints as well. So before we do that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rename these joints. I'm going to name them spring, um, because these will be used with our spring IK solver. Let's add spring to the end of all of this. All right, then I'm going to duplicate these joints, and I'm going to replace the word spring with um, rotate plane. Let's bring rotate plane like this. 
let's get rid of the one here. So what I'm going to do first is hide these joints because I'm not working with them right now. So now I have my spring joints here and let's just make a spring solver IK handle. Spring solver selected. Um, let's start from the hips and let's go to the base of the foot like this. And let's call this spring IK handle. So that's part one. Now I'm going to hide my uh, spring joints. I'm going to bring back my rotate plane joints. And let's make the second IK handle. And that's going to be a rotate plane solver. And it's going to go from the knee to the end of the foot, like this. And let's call this rotate plane IK handle. Uh, and while we're here, we can also set up the toes. So let's just do our standard single chain from the base of the toes to here. And let's call this toe IK handle. Now, what we're going to do is take our rotate plane IK handle and parent it under our spring IK handle. So when we move our spring IK, it's also going to control our rotate plane. And we're going to group this together and let's just call this IK group and let's put the um, pivot here at the base of the foot. Now in order to make this work what we're going to have to do is take our rotate plane joints and basically parent them under our spring joints. So let's take our upper uh, upper leg rotate plane and let's parent it under our upper leg spring. Now this is going to make all the joints disappear because uh, the top joint here is invisible. So what I'm going to do is kind of bring that back, um, but I'm going to disable the drawing of the spring joints um, by selecting them all. I have a little script here that does it for me. Uh, what it basically does is when you select a joint and you go to the attribute editor, you can change the draw style of the of the joint to uh, bone or none. If you set it to none, it will just disappear from your viewport. So now we have this, and now when we take um, our IK group here and we move it around, we get a nice looking IK setup. But what we can also do is take our thigh joint here, our upper leg joint, and rotate this. And this will actually give us the control that we need for, this, for the angle of this joint. Um, let's quickly set up the toes as well. So let's call this toe IK group and let's position this um, right here so we can rotate this around and let's take our IK group and our toe IK group group all of this together and call this the foot group and let's also position this right here all right so we can take our foot group we can move it around we can take this joint and we can uh, adjust the angle here to adjust the angle of our overall uh, overall leg. Now, I personally wouldn't uh, want an animator to grab this joint and rotate it around. Um, so I, on my controller to control the leg, I would set up a special uh, a separate attri attribute uh, that just controls rotate C here on this joint. To control the knee, what we can do is also take this joint and um, just rotate it along the Y axis give us control of the knee. We can set up a uh, pole vector for the lower part here. So let's quickly do that. Bring back our little script. One, two, three. There's our locator and this locator is going to control the pole vector of our rotate plane IK handle. Like this. We can control this. You can control this. Um, this pole vector controller. If you put the pole vector controller in your foot group, you can actually take your entire foot group and rotate it around to get a complete, uh, to just um, rotate the leg completely like this. There you have it. This is the uh, the third setup, and in my opinion, it's the better one of all three because it'll give you nicer deformation out of the box while still having full control of the 
angle of the joint here. All right, so here we have all three metals next to each other. I added some simple controllers so I don't have to go into the outliner every time to demonstrate how they work. So method one, um, we can move the leg around and then we can use this controller to adjust the angle of the ankle. And we have a pole vector controller to control the knee. Uh, this controller back here, we can rotate to get this motion on the back of the ankle. Now for method two, Basically the same thing, but instead of rotating the controller for the ankle, we could slide it back and forward to adjust the ankle. And then we can use the pole vector controllers to control the knee and the back of the ankle here. Then we have method three, which has the most automation setup. So when we move um, the leg around, you can see that both the, uh, the knee and the ankle, and the ankle um, move with the IK. And then we have a controller here, which has a special attribute called ankle angle that we can move uh, or change to move the angle of the angle. Uh, same thing for the knee to rotate it. <coughs> and then we have a pole vector controller back here to control the back of the ankle. Now, <coughs> the thing that I like about method three is out of the box when you compare it to method one and two. You can see that you get some animation automatically on the ankle while on method one and two, it remains locked in place and it's up to the animator to move these controllers to get the same result. Now, some animators like this, other animators like a rig that's as automated as possible. Personally, I also like to automate as many things as I can just to save time, but to each their own, I guess. So right, these are three methods you can use to set up a dog leg. Let me know if you liked the videos and I will catch you on the next one.